Hello and welcome to our webcast. Today's topic will be displacement ventilation. My name is Randy Zimmerman and I'll be presenting today's program. I'll be joined later by Jim Oswegan and James Gray for the question and answer session. Jim is also a Titus Chief Engineer with over 45 years experience and James is a product manager for all Titus grill, register, and diffuser products. In today's program, we'll start out talking about basic system concepts, and then we'll look at how displacement ventilation diffusers work. We'll also look at typical applications, design procedures, and product selection. Along the way, we'll use smoke videos and other tools to, to help demonstrate the air patterns created by displacement ventilation. Let me assure you that the purpose of this webcast is not to sell displacement ventilation as the best system for every building. We'll discuss the reasons why certain applications are recommended while others are not, but it's important to consider displacement ventilation as one more possible solution. I like to think of displacement as one more tool in my toolbox of air distribution systems. We should start by explaining the difference between conventional overhead systems and displacement ventilation. Conventional overhead systems provide comfort through room air mixing. For this reason, these systems are also known as fully mixed systems. In typical cooling applications, 55 degree air is supplied from ceiling diffusers or high side wall grills. The induction created by the outlet discharge jet results in room air motion. This so-called secondary air motion is due to the entrainment of room air into the supply jet where mixing occurs. Ideally, an overhead system results in fully mixed air throughout the occupied zone with minimal temperature stratification. It's important to note that in a system like this, the first thing our supply air does is pick up heat from the overhead lighting. This is one reason why we typically need to supply a 20 degree delta T on our supply air. We'll see in a moment why higher supply temperatures not only work well, but are actually recommended for displacement systems. Displacement ventilation takes a very different approach to providing comfort in the occupied zone. Instead of trying to eliminate temperature stratification throughout the space, displacement takes advantage of the natural buoyancy of air to create stratification as warmer air and pollutants rise towards the ceiling. For this reason, displacement systems are also known as fully stratified systems. In our industry, the word stratification often carries a negative connotation, but that's not really fair. So long as the temperature gradient in the stratification zone isn't excessive, we should achieve comfort in the occupied zone. Now that we know what displacement is, let's look at how it works. Displacement systems typically supply 63 to 68 degree air through specially designed diffusers that are located on low side walls. This cool air discharges at less than 80 feet per minute from the face of the diffuser and quickly cascades down to the floor. The air continues to move slowly across the room in a layer about four inches deep until it locates a source of heat or an obstruction. In office applications, the heat sources in the occupied zone are usually people and equipment. When the slow moving pool of air encounters a heat load, it quickly rises and carries the heat and pollutants towards the ceiling. Internal heat loads and contaminants are then carried away by the return air. We refer to this as a thermal plume. In order for displacement ventilation to work most efficiently, the return air should be pulled from well above the occupied zone, preferably from the highest point in the room. Since much of the heat load from overhead lighting is captured from above the occupied zone and supply temperatures are higher, you should expect higher return air temperatures than would be found in a conventional mixed air system. In order to avoid potential humidity issues and air quality concerns, we need to limit our relative humidity to 60% or less. There are many strategies we can employ at the air handler, or we might choose desiccant dehumidification. If we choose to drop our air temperatures to 55 degrees to wring the moisture out of the air, we can blend return air with the supply air to bring it back to 65 degrees. Now let's look at, at a live demonstration. We'll use theatrical smoke to help you see the characteristics of the air pattern created by displacement ventilation. The temperature in our throw room is controlled to maintain 73 degrees and the supplier temperature will be 65 degrees. As soon as we remotely switch on the smoke generator, you'll be able to see the cool air cascading down the face of the diffuser. 
Now look at the way it moves across the floor. I've often heard it described much like water being poured from a bucket. If it doesn't find a heat load or doesn't bump into an obstruction, it could easily cover up to 30 feet before it runs out of velocity. Now let's look at a displacement diffuser uh, supplying a room with a heat source. While there are many application guides and brochures available from manufacturers, the most reliable sources for highly detailed information regarding the science behind displacement ventilation are non-commercial publications from ASHRAE and REVA. These publications are the result of industry-sponsored research, and they have undergone peer review to ensure the accuracy of their content. I would encourage anyone looking for additional information about displacement ventilation to seek out these fine publications. The new Titus Displacement Ventilation Guide can be found on our website. It was written by yours truly and was based upon the results of ASHRAE Research Project RP949 as presented in the ASHRAE Displacement Ventilation Guide. This research was sponsored in part by ASHRAE Technical Committee 5.3 and represents the latest and best research concerning displacement ventilation.